Let me turn now to John Locke's theory of the self. What is it that makes me me? Locke gives a very different answer. It has nothing to do with souls. It has nothing to do with metaphysics, really. It has to do with a kind of continuity, as we'll see. So Locke is asking the same question. What makes me me? What made me, that little kid sitting on the sofa with the Davy Crockett hat, the same person as the one who's talking now? He says, well, the self is unified by consciousness. My body is something that could actually change. I could become the bionic man, and it would still be me with artificial limbs and so on. The consciousness that I have is what really defines me, and it's unified by connections between my various mental states. So memory is a key to that. I remember. Now, I don't remember being the little kid with the Davy Crockett hat, but I do remember, for example, being dressed that way and having the photographs taken for my college graduation picture. And at that time, I could remember more clearly than I do now what it was like to be in junior high school. And then I could remember what it was like to be in elementary school. And then I could remember what it was like before that. And then I could remember, and so on. And there's a kind of chain of memories, but also anticipations, desires, intentions, all sorts of things that tie our mental states together. And it leads all the way through back to that little baby on the sofa. Now, we have to be careful here, because Locke says there is no simple answer to the question of what makes something the same whatever, the same table, the same shirt, the same machine, the same person. Those are different things. What makes something the same depends on what that something is. Now, notice that Aristotle was happy to draw a kind of analogy with something like a table. The table is matter plus form. Well, I am matter plus soul. The soul takes over the role of the form, or the essence. Locke says, be careful about that kind of analogy, because actually what makes something the same whatever varies. It depends on what that is. So for example, let's think about a lump of matter, like a sand pile. What? I look at it today, and then I come back tomorrow. And you say, is that the same sand pile, or is it a different sand pile? How would I know? And actually, forget the knowledge part. What would make it the same sand pile? What would it be for it to be the same lump of matter, the same pile of sand? Yeah? Something that was in the same location as it was that you recognize would be similar to what was there yesterday. OK. He said something in the same location similar to what was there yesterday. Now, is that enough for it to be the same sand pile? Some of you are shaking your head no. Why not? Yeah? Uh, well, okay, we want something the same mass, same density, same volume, but there's a bigger problem with that, isn't there? Yeah. If they got rid of that sand like overnight and put the cash there or something. Ex exactly. What if the sand pile disappeared overnight, they used that sand, but then a truck came in and dumped the same amount of sand in the same place and a pile that looked just the same? Is that the same sand pile? Well, no, right? It's a different sand pile. It has different sand in it. Yeah. At least some of the sand sand grains. At least some of the sand grains need to be the same. Good. Yeah. There needs to have been no erosion, no radioactive decay at all, no loss of atoms, no loss of electrons, quarks, anything, kept in a complete state of stasis. OK, he said, exactly. look, it has to be exactly the same sand, the same grains, no radioactive decay, no movement, <coughs> no wind blowing a few grains off, et cetera, et cetera, which really means in practice you never see the same sand pile. If somebody says, is that the same sand pile? Or, Wait, is that the same car you used to drive? Always say, no. Different gas in the tank. No, different car. <laughs> uh, we could mean that. We could mean exactly the same stuff in exactly the same condition. However, that's going to mean nothing's ever the same. Now, some philosophers conclude that's exactly right. That's Heraclitus' view. That's why you can't put your foot in the same river twice. Can't drive the same car twice. Can't look at the same sand pile twice, and so on. But that's a pretty extreme reaction. In practice, yeah? Did you say it's, um, it would be the same if it's a perfect sub substitute for what we're there before? If it's a perfect substitute, ooh. <laughs> Let's say there was a packet of sugar there, and you were going to use it, but somebody else took it away. And they said, oh, but here's some Splenda. It's a perfect substitute. <laughs> you, you wouldn't say it's the same thing, right? You'd say, no, it's a different thing. It's not the same thing. Yeah. Doesn't it also depend on the question? 
So, you know, Ooh, if someone asked you, like, hey, is that the same car that you drove yesterday? I mean, it is the same car, but it, it also, like, kind of just really depends on how they're asking you, you know? Like, well, in what way, okay? Like, <laughs> her, her point is, look, suppose somebody says, is that the same car you were driving yesterday? The answer should depend on, now what? On, well, did you change your car? Like, did I go and, like, exchange my BMW for a Mercedes? Well, if I did, then it's, that I changed my car. But if I've kept the same car, and if I haven't actually taken action to switch vehicles, then it would still be my car, and it would be the same car. Right. But if someone said, hey, has the has your car matter changed overnight, or have you added some new clothes into your car, then yeah, like the car has changed, uh, essentially. So okay. it just depends on the question. Well, all right. Now, cars are different from just lumps of matter. Mm -hmm. And so we have to come to them as a separate case, because a machine is very different from just something like a sand pile, in Locke's view, anyway. With a sand pile, he says, look, we can allow for some grains to have slipped off for some new things to be added, as long as it's more or less the same size and so on. Maybe even somebody could have taken some chunks out of it. And you could say, yeah, it's the same sand pile, but it's smaller today because they used part of the sand. So what he says is it's a matter of continuity of substance. It doesn't have to be exactly the same substance in the same condition, but there has to be a continuity of substance. One of you said that there has to be at least some of the same sand there. He would say, that's right. And it's more than that. It's not enough for us to have taken it all away and then put it back <laughs> with part of the same sand. There's a kind of continuity to it. And so there can be gradual changes possible, but the basic thing is continuous. Now, cars are different. There is one of my cars, and the reason it's there is that I bought it with a big, big tear in the top, and I had to replace the top. Now, that was a kind of radical discontinuity. There was this big tore, tear in the top, and then there was no top, and then a new top got put on the car. And so, in that kind of case, what do you end up saying? It's still the same car, isn't it? Um, you can replace the tires. It'd be very strange for somebody to say, huh, is this the same car? And you say, oh no, I got new tires. <laughs> uh, ordinarily, you would think that doesn't matter, right? Um, however, some things, like if I say, oh yeah, I got a new body. <laughs> and a new engine, and so on. But maybe I end up saying, yes, it's really different. Or, there's my bass in the recording studio, as it happens. <laughs> um, I've changed the strings any number of times, but it's still the same bass. Actually, recently had a, had a problem. There was an electrical short, and it fried the electrical jack going into it. And so the electronics had to be replaced, and a new jack put in and everything else. Um, but still, it's the same bass. Okay, it's the same musical instrument. A musical instrument like a car is a sort of machine. You can change out the parts. And so what really matters is, here not continuity of substance, the substance can change, but it's a continuity of structure. I can replace the strings, I can replace the electronics, I can replace that jack. I could even replace the neck if something were to happen to it, and it would still be the same base. That would be very sad, because the <laughs> neck is awesome. But anyway, that's something that is the case for a machine. It's a continuity, not of substance, but of structure. Now, what about an animal? This is my cat, Snowy, who badly broke her arm shortly after we took her in. She uh, was outside for years, and friends of ours finally tamed her enough to bring her inside, and then they moved to Dallas and gave her to us. <laughs> that happens with a lot of cats in the Austin area, I'm afraid. Um, but anyway, uh, she then, we had this mission-style furniture, and she got her paws, paws stuck somehow in the mission-style furniture and broke her arm. Now, is it the same animal? Well, actually, we fixed her arm, but it's now held together with pins and screws and stuff, but still, it's the same animal, right? <laughs> and so how do you know that? Well, Locke says there's bodily continuity. Even if she had lost her arm, even if other things had happened that would force replacement of some parts of my cat, Still, it would be the same cat. There's a continuity of body here. But now, Locke says, you might think that answers the question for people, because after all, a human being is an animal. But he says, it is not so. There's a difference between being the same human being, the same, and being the same person. Why? Well, because person has moral significance. If I, for example, have committed some crime in the past, you want to say I, <laughs> 
am now responsible for my crime. And if I've done something good in the past, you want to say, maybe I am now eligible for a reward. Personal is some, a person is something that has normative significance. It has to do with rights, responsibilities, punishments, deserving things, and so on. And you might say, here's the problem. We can hold A responsible for what B has done, if and only if they're the same person. Only if, it, if there is this relationship of identity between the me who did that thing, let's say, and me now. But now that's not just being the same animal. He says that's being something different. So what is it to be the same human being? Well, it's not just a matter of being the same animal. He says we are essentially things that think. And so being the same person is a matter of being the same thinking thing, having a continuity of consciousness. If what really is essential to us, something like that, having a soul, is something that has normative force. It has to do with responsibilities and rights and blame and responsibility and so on. It really has to be something mental. He says it's a question of continuity of consciousness. But now that raises all sorts of interesting possibilities. Okay, um, If it's a matter of having the same consciousness, in the sense that there is a continuity, and I can remember things from that past, and then I intended things here, and I have plans, and all of those things that are either future-oriented or past-oriented that tie me together mentally, that seems to open up a wide range of possibilities. So for example, could Socrates be reincarnated as Caesar Borgia? Locke says, well, there's no conceptual impossibility in that. Maybe, indeed, there could be a continuity of consciousness. If Caesar Borgia remembers his earlier life, for example, as Socrates, or if Socrates plans on becoming, <laughs> at a later period of history, Caesar Borgia, as long as there's a continuity of consciousness, there actually could be such a connection. <coughs> could Heliogabalus be reincarnated as a hog? Sure, why not? This person who was rather nasty in life, maybe he gets reincarnated and brought back as an animal, as a hog. Couldn't that happen? there would have to be a continuity of consciousness. That is to say, the hog would have to have certain mental features in common with Heliogabalus, but it's possible. Could a wicked witch turn a prince into a frog? Why not, as long as there's some continuity between the two? Let's say the frog remembers his life as a prince. What about one person in two bodies? Could one person be in two bodies? I mean, why not? Maybe I am a mild-mannered philosopher by day, and. Chinese laborer in a Shanghai cookie factory by night. <laughs> uh, could two people be in one body? Sure, right? And finally, could we have life after death? As long as something survives that actually could be mentally continuous with me in this life. So Socrates and Caesar Borgia, Heliogabalus and the hog, the frog prince, or, ah, I went to a Buffy episode for examples of... <laughs> one person in two bodies, or two people in one body. This is Glorificus, who in season five also occupies this body sometimes, but sometimes that body is occupied by the mild manner uh, medical assistant, Ben. <laughs> and so we got examples there, both one person in two bodies and two people in one body. Uh, <laughs> that picture. <laughs> um, and then life after death. All of those are at least conceptual possibilities. Now, Locke is not saying he thinks they're real or that his theory indicates that reincarnation really happens, that frog princes are real and so on, but he says it's not a confusion. It's something that is conceptually possible. Whether the world's really like that or not is a different question, but there's no...